You're listening to the Shire Fit Podcast. This series, Max and Johnny explore how to become the master of your mindset. Okay, another podcast, guys. We are back. Uh, this is now episode four of the Mindset series. We have been a little bit poor in releasing previous episodes, so I will improve that in future weeks. <laughs> Apologise, it's been a busy period. But yeah, the, it's not like you got married or competed at any. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's been a little bit busy. The yeah, th- third episode comes out today as me and Johnny sit down and record this, and then I'll get this one out um, next week, so we we'll get back to a more consistent rhythm. Um, the format will remain the same every week. Warm up question from a listener. We actually got this one in person today from Paul about six packs, classic Paul. We then <laughs> have a strength section, which is about how CrossFit is starting to shift in a different direction and a workout which is based upon why me and Johnny think that CrossFitters and CrossFit communities are nice, generally nice. Um, So we'll launch into the first part which is the warm-up question. This is from Paul. I've literally just asked him for it now. Uh, He asks, how many years do I have to do CrossFit before I get a six-pack? Um. Now, I've got a bit of a challenge for, for Johnny. What is the challenge? He's locked and loaded and no, ready to deliver. I'm ready to hear your thoughts. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to challenge Johnny to actually answer the question. Now, there's a lot to unpack and, and, you know, you could go down, does he need to have a six-pack? Why does he want a six-pack? All those things. But I want you to answer the question that's on the board, which is how many years do I have to do CrossFit before I get a six-pack? Go, Johnny. Does it depends count as an answer? Yeah, but then you have to elaborate on that. Right, so the answer is it depends. And it depends on the, um, I mean, even the ex- the workouts themselves will have a fa- have a factor because there's there's different things here in that there's the growing of the abdominal muscles themselves, um, and there's the size that somebody has in terms of abdominal muscles genetically anyway, and then there's a difference between starting body fat percentage, which again has um, a, a certain genetic component, and then there's the length of uh, obsession that you have toward maybe restricting food intake to get body fat low enough that they then become visible so it depends on all of those factors so you cannot answer this specifically because even frequency each week of training will factor into how many years that takes and for some people it might not ever be a thing that could healthily be achieved or maintained Is that good. Was answering the question? It's a really good. Yeah, it's, it, you actually did answer the question, which is cool because I, like, I think my job here with you is to tr- is to tunnel you towards it. Yeah. Uh, have I had some feedback that I just? No, 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 you? no, no, no. <laughs> I, I just think this question. There's a lot. There's so, so much, much to go into, Like yeah. you could do the whole podcast on this on like the me- mentality and why you know because there was a time in CrossFit where it was all about being lean and everyone associated like have you got six back? Oh, you're going to be like good. we spoke about yeah, last week, yeah, exactly. which is coming out today. Which is yeah. thankfully we've moved away from that and you've got these better you know sort of athletes at the top of the game showing up with like you know the yellow costa from he's just um he's just qualified from belgium like the geezer looks like a normal bloke man he like he hasn't he doesn't look like an athlete in any way shape or form just like a right. normal guy and he is a beast he's so so good yeah, so yeah. I think we're getting this shift away from this six pack being important that is in crossfit though and in the general fitness atmosphere a six pack still still seems to be the holy grail but without going into all of that i think you answered christian question really well um i think my side of things is is, is, is exactly that um what you said i'm trying to give some usable tips now so the first one is um if you actually want a six-pack pool you know recognize that it's an individual road and for some people they'll walk in the door with a six-pack and for other people it might take five six eight ten slash never they'll never achieve it yeah so it's an individual road second muscle hypertrophy the abs yeah it's missed in crossfit it is missing we do you don't actually do direct we do a lot of volume like 50 like imagine if you wanted to grow your biceps you wouldn't go in and do fifth sets of 50 bicep curls every week you know no. you wouldn't work right um we know that 8 to 12 generally is that hypertrophy range we know we need to train muscles groups to failure that's been proven yes you can uh, create create hypertrophy with sets of 20 but it has to be you know to complete failure and so on and so forth so yeah train your abs like any other muscle group would be my suggestion yeah. from a coaching perspective yeah um like load them up make it heavy things like ghds have been 
Uh, yeah, these are great. Unreal for because CrossFit they've got development. that full, yeah. that huge range of motion. And they're hard. And they're hard. They're really the only hard. thing about that is the component of the back, yeah. uh, the spine, um, the extension and flexion of, of that, the how much you're using your legs. And yeah, if you're using, are you using the quads. Yeah, you yeah. know, because you need to have your knees bent on the way down of the GHD and then extend yeah. the knees on the way up so that you're using the hip flexors appropriately yeah. to yeah. help with the ab contraction. And as you're right, there's there's direct ab flexion. There's also um, isolation. There's rotation. There's all of these different ways. And you need to look at it as another muscle group for hypertrophy. You're right. It's a different style of training, like yeah. two to three times a week. Because if you look at something like sets of Turner, 12 to 20 reps, yeah. Like he, he won't mind me saying he's not that lean in terms of body fat percentage. Compared to CrossFitters of Com- the elite level. Yeah, sorry. Uh, caveat. Um, but, you know, he's still got ab muscles that but shine you can see through. how thick yeah. his abs are yeah but that's what abs i'm talking about well developed yeah like look if you wanted to look at elite crossfitters and you looked at all the men you then look at the different ab tissue that they have and the different like thickness of the ab muscles themselves mm. and that's where there's that genetic component of the because uh, i was obsessed with getting abs we, mm. we chat yeah i was gonna say we could go into episode, your journey here yeah yeah that the, um that comes up with it but for me the level of training i did and the level of obsession with food it's very different to someone else that wouldn't obsess about those things, but yet still maintain them. So again, it's the cost to benefit ratio of the aesthetic picture. And it all comes back to that lean physique, yeah. men's health ideal. Because as you said, in the fitness world, it's like they look, you even said the word, they look like an athlete. Yeah. And that's where that all comes from. So. Because no, it's fine. Because <laughs> I, I had a conversation with someone on my own podcast about this, about we were talking about intuitive eating and body of, uh, appreciation for the athletic population. Because the original framework is very much for, women and Mm. yo-yo dieters and we chatted about the observance in sport of people who don't look like they are quote-unquote athletes or quote-unquote fit but yet are amazing at their sport Mm. a couple of years ago there was a international rugby player for france who was a winger Mm. and he was a larger bloke but Mm. he was rapid Mm. great feet great hands really powerful because of his size doesn't look like a winger but was one of the world's best wingers yeah yeah definitely like yeah, I think you could answer Paul's question with a load of other questions. Like, um, yeah, that, that involves a, a sustainable six pack. Yeah, like he, does he want that for the rest of his life, or does he want to just get a picture taken with some oil on and a and a fake tan, and then go? I've had a six pack once. I'm done. I've achieved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, like, like you say, is it even healthy to chase a, a six pack? I'd say from I'm going to put myself on neck on the line here. I'd say from a women's perspective, I would say no. Not at all. Yeah, like I, I've I've seen very few women with six packs and ones that are generally uh, under fueling, overtraining, and probably not as healthy as they possibly could be mm-hmm. just because women tend to hold slightly more body fat um, percentage than men. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what would... What yeah, would yeah. You, yeah, would I, you agree? I worked with women yeah. who had done certain like Santa Shred programs mm. from certain fitness professionals that will remain unnamed. Yeah. And they worked with me because they had not had a period for like two years. Mm. So even though that they didn't, weren't doing that program anymore, it still created the obsession over trying to stay lean yeah. via food restriction and overtraining that they had no menstruation. Mm. And that's not, that's not normal unless nah. there's something else going on there that affects that system. But that was a, that was an underfueling and overtraining thing. And we did restore that through working together which was cool that's a cool thing to do like you're generally improving someone's health yeah and for guys um as you said so for women it's going to differ though because mm-hmm. there's like annie thora's daughter for example look yeah at her six shredded pack, all year round yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah but that's the way she always was with mm-hmm. that and she's doing a level of volume that is obviously more than the average person because she is a competitive Talk about ab- ab- hypertrophy though she's got massive abdominal yeah muscle thick. trophy yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but then and then it's different to every other competitive female mm-hmm. woman and yeah Hey, look at someone like Laura Horvath. She she hasn't protect, you know she hasn't particularly got a six pack, has she? She's just a beast. But yeah, I, she was I, a beast from like teenage years. <laughs> she was ridiculously strong. I, I think uh, yeah, it's such a big question that um, if you were to take Paul as a, an avatar, and then he comes to you and he says, "I want to get a six pack sustainably, one that I can hold." What are you going to tell him as a nutritional coach or even a mindset coach on that? Well, I mean, it's the bigger conversation, as we just said, about mm. individually going into the why? cost to benefit and the yeah. why. Mm. Also, Paul is a lean guy. Mm. He is, yeah. 
So for me, I'd probably be talking to him about the Paul, if you're training. listening, Johnny at the start of the podcast when we were discussing off air said, "Hasn't Paul already got a six pack?" Well, yeah, so there you go. There's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing as well. We've got to remember that our subjective body image is very different to how others see us, mm. and we're always going to see ourselves um, in the most critical way, which is the fault of a self-critical mind and also a body obsessed society and also you're so close to your own body image that you see yourself in the mirror you, you look down like you've got such a different image of yourself that everybody else sees mm. and that can damage us because then we can over obsess about certain things that we see as flaws that other people don't even see yeah um so i'd have that deep conversation i'd also say then that your st- I'd ask, you know, your style of training. I'd ask about certain nutrition decisions that might need to be made. I'd argue with Paul specifically that it was more of a muscle gain journey yeah. than a fat loss journey, and that's a big I'd thing agree. that people focus on incorrectly, in my opinion, in CrossFit overall is the desire to lose weight and be lean. As we chatted about last week, is so strong that most people underfuel, yeah, and really actually focusing on fueling correctly and training appropriately will provide you with better hypertrophy I love that. gain and recovery yeah, i love that and that it's will just provide focus that yeah. will provide a better aesthetic outcome yeah. and there is a, a thing called um blah what is the concept uh, energy flux mm. thank you energy flux he said where, thank you but i didn't help you at all no no i got it myself <laughs> you're thanking yourself <laughs> thanks brain <laughs> um energy flux where it's about this we talked about it last week with the ratio of um food to output yes and it's one of those where like as your energy output increases your food input needs to increase as well Mm. but that has a good that has a good rate that has a good effect to your energy output and that you're able to train harder elicit greater adaptations from exercise perform at a higher intensity and at a higher volume and therefore both of those things can kind of come up together Mm. whereas if you're trying to raise energy output but decrease energy input your energy output is actually going to decrease and your adaptations to training and recovery are going to suffer and then it's just a race to the bottom I love that. I think, yeah, it's just a switch of focus. Let's focus on what can we gain to make you feel more comfortable with your torso and gain not train. what do we have to lose. Yeah, Gain train. Mm. Cool. Love that. Um, Paul, if you want any additional help, speak to Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, strength section, guys, is um, our take on that CrossFit's programming has started to shift towards skills. And that implies that it shifts away from something. I'm going to jump straight in on this one because Johnny's had his moment on the old six-pack debate. Yeah, well, and you'll have more (laughs) to say about this than me because you've consistently competed now for much longer. Yeah, so I think it has slightly, um, which is a good thing for the sport. So previously, uh, for those who weren't aware and are starting to follow the sport, perhaps new members, etc., they'll start to see that um, the CrossFit Games was run and directed by the uh, a man called Dave Castro who was removed from post um i think probably just to create a slightly more corporate and um commercial image for the brand um and replaced by a man called Adrian Bosman the two had slightly different ideas on what crossfit elite level fitness should look like and it's quite obvious in the programming so dave was all about power and strength he wanted people to be wowed by the weights that people lifted, the speed at which they moved, and the um, amount of work they could do in a short time frame, which you could see typically with these one RM events, these um, sprint style obstacle courses and agility races and things, and then these uh, machine power output events, basically. Now, every single CrossFit Games has long endurance, they have gymnastics, they do, but the programming was slightly more biased towards strength and power. Um, now you've got this new guy comes in he's called Adrian Bosman um, we met him at semi-finals last week uh, pretty cool actually he come to semi-finals which I think was awesome in Berlin and then fist bumped said good luck to every single competitor as they walked out onto the that is court, cool which is pretty decent yeah good on him yeah um, and he started to shift the, the programming slightly away from that more towards skills Adrian's b- background is that he was a circus performer um, I don't know if I, I never actually verified that by the way but I heard that in the grapevine so I'm, I'm going to say it now <laughs> circus performer um, and so his you know uh, sort of flavour potentially is more towards like gymnastics ability and skills which you've started to see come in with these things like handstand pirouettes with um, chest fall, chest facing wall handstand push ups uh, with general development of skills double cross endos things like that um, so 
yeah, that's my first perception that it has started to shift and for good reason, actually, because I think the sport was far too skewed towards strength. Um, to sort of demonstrate that, if you took an American level, American CrossFit Games athlete, they would have previously under Dave Castro, any games competitor would have been able to walk into a national level weightlifting team at, at the American weightlifting teams and pick up a spot. Mm. But contrast that to the gymnastics ability, if you put them in a gymnastics team, they wouldn't even be able to get through secondary school no. uh, level gymnastics. You know, so the sport was skewed that way, quite obviously. And yeah. the reason for that is because of pure programming. So you get these events that are one RM snatch, for example, and you get 100 points to win it. It's pure. It's all about snap. Uh, it's all about strength, and so as a result, um, people would train that event because it's worth more points, and therefore the sport gets generally stronger and stronger every single year. Yeah. Whereas you contrast that to a more Adrian Bosman t- style event, which was like something we did at semi-finals recently, which was the sort of clean one-minute max reps that had different elements. It wasn't pure strength. There was a recovery start. You know, strength endurance, really. strength endurance, yeah. and there was a recovery element of it because there was a minute rest in between each station. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, two minute rest. Um, you know, still pretty heavy, still a strength test, but different in flow. Would you say you have seen similar things, Johnny? It's difficult for me to comment fully because of the time I spent away from the sport um, and away from a CrossFit gym in total. Because then, even like, I didn't even know what the open workouts were, quarterfinal workouts yeah. were, even the, the format changed to like quarterfinals, semifinals, yeah. regionals, whatever. Like, it's all been very different to when I was in the sport, which was just open regionals games what i did notice back when i was in the sport was the open would be very light and gassy mm-hmm. all of the time yeah. and then the regionals would be really heavy so you just get loads of people at the regionals that couldn't really lift the weight and if they could they were at the games and that to me it was very difficult for then like stronger people to get through the open but those that did then had the gas tank to be fair to go on and and, and then had the strength to win the regional i can see the the difference in the programming from knowing what you guys faced at semi-finals and and even looking at the quarterfinals as you said with the um nose to wall handstand push-ups and yeah. and things like, and like handstand pirouettes and mm. the, i mean the double cross unders i'd kind of argue were a bit pointless but it's not me the whole point of crossfit back in the day was regularly learn and play new sports mm. and you know practice skills and even in the crossfit level one handbook he talks about like handstand pirouettes and and rings and yeah get, get, you know doing uprises and things like that and we've never ever seen those you're right in that the ring and gymnastic work just sort of stopped at muscle up and yeah. that was the pinnacle of the sport and or strict handstand push-up even that coming into the open was a big thing and you've you've got to take them with a pinch of salt when it comes to open and quarterfinals because there's only so much that you can regulate when it comes to people standards. doing it in their own gym yeah. and the standards and that's yeah. always going to be an issue with the programming so it'll be really interesting to see where the games go with it mm. because of the level of staff that they have and the level of resources they have i definitely enjoyed what dave castro did in previous years with like random objects like op- the obstacle course race was always really cool the you know the random um triathlon that they did that uh, year when they just took them to that marie was it a marie army base that year um, yeah they did an for- obstacle course didn't they that was well, two they years did an obstacle course that, yeah. and they also did like a long triathlon yeah um yeah. and then they're, they're you know they've done things like they've created the pig and they but you're right in that even when they did that stuff it was like let's create a really heavy random object mm. and if you look at classic crossfit obviously we've moved a lot away from that now but if you look at some of the benchmark workouts like nancy it's 40 kilo overhead squats mm. so it's designed to just go as fast as you can but you've got to think if crossfit's truly testing all domains you can't just get rid of a max strength because no, yeah. but you need to include the other things like a max skill or a max speed and a max so you've got max strength max speed max skill um max gymnastic maybe there's a different thing between total reps strength endurance it's, you've just got such a whole continuum of stuff that maybe yeah you do need heavy events but you need more light and gassy events at the games as well because then you are testing a full spectrum of fitness rather than just everything being a heavy wad yeah I think, to be honest, they have two separate themes. I think Dave was trying to promote the sport and like showcase, like, look at how insane our athletes are. They're so good, right? Yeah. And I think Adrian's more like, I want to, I want to get pure test. I want to see who I think is the fittest based on my perception of what the fitness is. If that makes sense. Yeah. So he's not scared to make the athletes look a little bit 
you know, amateur by throwing in a cross under, you know, at the games level and people not being able to do them. He's not scared to kind of te- trip people up, um, which, you know, maybe that's because he's in the infancy of the role, but it would be interesting to see how the sport develops. Um, I think the key takeaway for our listeners is we are, as a gym and as a brand, going to switch our style of um, programming to suit because I think it's in the right direction and we're probably going to spend more time doing skill development. So one of the big things that Bosman said was we are not training skills correctly. His his point, I've listened to his podcast on this um, with, uh, oh, the mind's blank, my, my mind's blanking now, the linchpin owner, what's his name? Pat Sherwood. Um, he's got a podcast with, he jumped on Pat Show and he was basically saying that the sport isn't training skills correctly, in his opinion. In that, for example, let's take the sport of the handstand push-up. People train it, they get skill, strict handstand push-up, and then it's just about volume. They keep it there, and it's just about volume. I just want to get really amazing at uh, handstand push-ups. You could replace that with muscle-ups. People train, they do the skill, they get the muscle-up, and it's like, how many muscle-ups can I get them broken? Rather, so they choose volume of the same level of skill rather than trying to upgrade the level. So he was saying, in my opinion, we should be training skills to upgrade the level. So once you've got a strict handstand push-up, can you get a freestanding strict handstand push-up? Can you get a L-sit to strict handstand push-up? You know, it's level up, level up theory rather than you've got the skill, let's train it flows. Yeah, you're right. And that is that is how they talked about it in the handbook, yeah. which is why then it, you, you are bringing it back more to that philosophy. And you're right in that I'm intrigued to see where it goes because you've got a generation of CrossFitters that are so sagittal plane dominant mm. it's just all up and down and you know that year that they did the the softball throw <laughs> you could argue it was built for rich Fronin because of his baseball career but yeah. he just had that skill in the locker and yeah. actually it's rotation isn't it there's mm. not as much rotational transverse pl- plane front or plane work within crossfit and to have that more than at the game's level you'd then get a much more 360 degree training program and yeah it's interesting here at a location where you're working with gen general population people because training for sport and training for gen pop are different things. Yeah. But then to sort of bring more skill development, more play, yeah, exactly. more rotational play work yeah. within a gen pop training environment, it's great because actually yeah. then you're increasing the um, exposure to different movement patterns and different skills, which actually improves your overall resiliency and fitness yeah and i'd like to sort of take the chance to open like sort of hold my hands up on that in terms of programming where i think potentially we've just sort of married mar- married the sport in let's take for example with double unders as an example people get double they train to get double unders here and then it's all about right Max can you do 300 in a workout but yeah. you can't blame yourself for that because at the end of the day that's what dave castro created through the games yeah. was the, look at how amazing our athletes are because then that did blow up the sport yeah because everyone's watching it on netflix and being like man i want to do that mm. so then you are and we just followed that, that model where yeah, it's like of course you Adrian's will, that's now going want. okay you've got double unders can you get triples yeah. can you get cross unders can you get double cross unders? Yeah. how hard are triple unders by the way can you do many yeah yeah i've got i've got some i quite yeah. like triple unders. <laughs> so <laughs> humble yeah, yeah i've got like 200 no, I definitely I'll get two hundred. Uh, I think I've managed like two in a row, and that's other good. than that, it's like I have to. You know, when you first learn double unders and it's yeah. single, single, double. It's yeah, like double, yeah, double, double, triple, yeah, double, yeah. triple, triple, and then my wrists have fallen off. Yeah, the yeah key takeaway for the members is expect some more skill development in our programming, um, and it should be fun. Like look, like Johnny said, play is a big part of sports and fitness. So I think it, that's a good thing to say as well at this point. In that, like now that we're in the summer obviously we have terrain as an offering but it's one of those where district l is a great ver- a great example of it yeah, you know very topical pa- you know paddle boarding and yeah. all you know all of that right really fun stuff in the lakes and mm. imagine being a crossfitter and going to um something like fellside crossfit or something like that that's in the lake district is so cool but it's also remembering that your fitness is to be used outside the gym mm. so like go cycling go running go swimming go play sports go and do stuff because that's why you come to the gym yeah is to increase your fitness to use it outside to enjoy it yeah cool right on to um the final part of the show which is the workout guys this week we are looking at why crossfitters and crossfit communities are generally nice now caveat that caveat that with saying in every single community you get some knobheads apart from Sharfit West Yorkshire and Sharfit North Leeds, because there's none. But yeah, um, generally, I'm talking generally speaking, most you know, most co- communities, you go to most CrossFit gyms, you go to most CrossFit competitions, and people are um, decent. Yeah. 
Um, and I think there's three sort of key reasons for that. Uh, and I and I just want to, I suppose the reason I'm saying this is I want people to have that awareness for themselves as to like actually why we're doing this. It's more profound than burpees and thrusters. Mm. It's better than that. It's actually making you a better person. So I think uh, the first one is that ego doesn't survive in CrossFit. So uh, it doesn't matter how good you get at CrossFit, someone's going to be better than you. Um, generally at something so you might be really good at power cleans someone's going to squat clean more than you you might be really good at press ups someone's going to um, bench more than you like you always have someone who's going to remind you that you're n- you're never like the king of anything uh, yeah uh, and that's the beauty of the sport and how different people are set up and things um i think that no matter how good you get there's always something to work on as well like yeah every le- like even you know the fittest person in the world at the moment justin medeiros you know um fittest woman in the world tier to me obviously she's pregnant this year but you know they, they're still looking for ways to improve there's still ways for them well, they to don't improve. win every workout do they exactly yeah and it, and if they if they did there'd still be something that they could be better at you know it's, it's crazy so i think that's like the first point is is um generally if it, it teaches you crossfit teaches you that ego has no place and that the only way to improve is to put your ego to the side and just work on your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the second re- key reason is about stress. Uh, and I think what CrossFit does really nicely is it teaches you how to deal with all different inputs of stress. So I don't think your body recognize. this is just my theory, by the way, might be completely wrong, but in my experience, I don't think your body recognizes different stresses. It doesn't care whether it's physical stress, environmental stress, social stress, psychological stress, whatever. It's just stress. And I think what CrossFit teaches you to do is deal with different levels across different time periods. So you get those really short, intense bouts of high stress. You get those longer, sort of drawn out periods of intense stress. And then you get those really small amounts of stress that carry on for, you know, an hour's workout or whatever. And that's a physical form of stress, but I think it also allows us, gives us the tools to deal with social stress, for example, you know, a big argument that happens in the workplace or something, or, you know, someone bitching about you behind your back in the workplace, or that long-term stress of like, my boss is watching me and I don't know if I'm doing a good job. I think your body like is better set up to deal with, your mind is better set up to deal with these different levels of stress. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, Definitely. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know whether you wanted me to jump then, in there. Um, and then the last one um, that Johnny raised before the podcast, I'll let him talk through this one because I've been talking for a lot, is that I think it teaches you to focus on yourself and your journey and your progression um, really well in that comparison doesn't really serve you in CrossFit. It, it doesn't push you in the right direction. It makes you look inside and go what can i do what do i appreciate my body for what skills have i got and and celebrate those whilst also being aware of your weaknesses and working on those as well mm, well i'd argue that comparison doesn't really serve you in any walk of life yeah and and people might say oh, well it gets you started or like you know the oh the focus on the aesthetic gets you started or, or what have you but and it's fine to have an, a, an external motivator to begin something but it's knowing that that's not going to get you the whole way like when people say I'm not motivated or I'm not disciplined or I'm not I don't want it or whatever like those are just toxic fitness terms that people use to try and guilt trip you into doing things whereas motivation comes from within self determination theory is a really cool thing where it's like you think about the things that you really enjoy doing or the things that you really value doing like you don't I struggle to do those things and it's not that like oh you should value fitness or whatever it's no it's like thinking about the aspects of those that you do value or thinking about how your values play through fitness or how it enhances your life and comparison to others is never going to serve that because it's going to have you focusing too much on the outcome which is something you cannot control and focus too much on everybody else when you've got no idea what people might be thinking about your performance. You're like, oh man, they're really good at double unders. I wish I could do double unders. And they're like, oh, that guy's really good at squats. I wish I could squat like that guy. And you're just missing all of the the benefits that you uniquely have. And you're also just focusing on all the wrong things because everybody who walks into CrossFit has a different set of genetics. They have a different family background. They have a different training age. They have a different experience of training. They've got a different background of sport of if any and physical activity, if any, and you've got a different job, different family, different life circumstances, just everything could not be more different. So there's absolutely no point in comparing yourself to other people because you're just going to, 
you're just going to make yourself mad whereas actually just focusing on your own thing realizing that you you talked about dealing with stress i agree that crossfit helps you deal with stress but also knowing that your stress is going to differ based on stuff that's going on at home or at work and and thereby you might need to lower intensity lower volume or what have you to deal with that but knowing that you are here to develop your own fitness in a way that serves your greater life and your longevity and that looks different for everyone yeah it's it's a bit of a phenomenon isn't it like you look at these really high level athletes CrossFit Games athletes and in, and in general they're all pretty decent nice people you know they take time out to say hello to fans and um, you know aren't dickheads to judges generally you know are supportive of their communities generally like and you and you just think like oh is this an like for me for a long period I've questioned that like is this an anomaly like or is this normal and all it seems that CrossFit just produces like nice people well i think because yeah. because if you if you focus too much on the leaderboard or your own ego or things like that you you will eventually quit yeah because you're just you'll just be working yourself into the ground you won't be enjoying it or you'll just end up just burning out because you're like oh, i can't be asked with this anymore i'm going to go and do something else mm. and instead as you said it's like when you have a bad experience with a judge you've then got to remember can't control that yeah when you miss a snatch I can't control that. Yeah. When you when you do an eight week strength program and your back squat doesn't increase, you can't control that. The only thing that you can control is the actions that you've taken to that process. Mm. And even then, there are so many things externally that might get in the way of that that you can't control. Yeah, and and, and I love that point of like someone would look at someone in the gym and go, "Oh, like they're so good at toast bar. I love like I'd love to be able to do as many toast bar as them." But then not realize that person's also looking back, going, "Oh, I wish I had as big a squat as that guy." And it almost makes you celebrate other pe- CrossFit makes you celebrate other people's achievements more than your own at times because you like recognize how much that means to them, and you're like, wow, that's like awesome, like well done, and and they don't even think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and I think and th- and that, that's why we talked offline and yeah. about how you changed your leaderboard. Um, yeah, oh, so, yeah, policy, which would mm. be good for you to go into why, because I know that I've worked in different CrossFit gyms where some wanted the scores on the on the board and others didn't, and in the original. Um, crossfit handbook the statement by glassman is that men will die for points Mm. so that's why we record our scores so that we are competitive with each other and therefore push each other's harder and there's a there's an element to that you know you you as a competitor will attest to a training environment being a really good thing to be within yeah but then there's also the is that sacrificing your form your integrity is that having you too focused on other people rather than we we spoke about that didn't we of um different mindsets and rather than focusing on the winner focus on winning you yeah. focus on your own race yeah um but also if i come into the pb board and i'm like mike mike's done 57 double unders oh man i can only do 40 you're missing out the fact that you can do 40 double unders yeah and you didn't you couldn't do 30 before yeah that's a massive improvement and it's why i people uh, when people say to me i uh, I'm, I'm getting better at actually not posting like a weight lifted on instagram mm-hmm. because i'll talk more about why i did that movement that day or i'll talk about my tempo that day or what i'm focusing on and when people say like oh that's really strong it's like oh thank you but it's also compared to what Mm. because i am i am thankful that i'm reasonably strong in the comparative arena but also it's like i'm also not compared to a lot of other people and also it doesn't matter because for me it's just i'm going in and i'm lifting and i'm having fun and and you should too and if you lift more the next day than you did the day before that's great you know you, yeah. you've improved your strength and fitness and that should be celebrated i remember max l Hadge, who's the training think tank coach or owner sorry um who he did a lecture once it was quite a cool one where he, he was like he asked the room he said oh does everyone in this room think rich phone and strong and obviously at the time he was like number one so everyone was like yeah he's so strong and he was like what about if i ask that question to powerlifters yeah and then they'd be like no he's yeah, not they were like he's weak yeah and then they're like what about gymnasts because you can't hold an iron cross for more than three seconds so is he strong like and he was like it's all relative like yeah. relative to your position of wealth or not so you know yeah like the leaderboard thing glad you raised it. i nearly forgot but um yeah we used to for those of you you know, who weren't who haven't been at shy fit for you know a really long time we used to stop at the end of every class we'd allocate five minutes to go round, and on the whiteboard we would write everyone's individual score i'd say right johnny what was your score in that and he'd say six minutes and i'd say right charlotte what was your score in that and she'd say one minute charlotte's a beast but anyway um 
And we used to write down the scores publicly in front of everyone, which we then shifted away from because we felt like the comparison to other people, though um, was a necessary part in terms of tracking scores and knowing how fit you got, was a negative in that some people potentially tied their self-worth to that score and then would sacrifice anything to get better at that score. Yeah. At the worst of that is cheating. At the best of that is sacrificing a bit of form just to get an extra rep, you know. So we then shifted to this new model where we had the Boxmate leaderboard, which gives you that chance to track and keep your scores. And if you want to engage with comparison, you can. But if you don't, then you don't have to. And that's kind of like why we shifted towards Boxmate instead. Yeah, and I I noticed that when I first started coming to classes here. And because I'd been in different gyms, as I said there, some were focused on the leaderboard, others weren't. Um, and you can see how that plays out in people's minds. When you have an online tracking system, people can use it the way that they want to. Um, but it, I, I liked Boxmate in the fact that you could see your previous results. And, and that was what I was used to with my having my own coach, for example, and an online training software was the comparisons more to my own benchmarks. And the, even the exercise history to like the next time I was doing reverse lunges for sets of 10 to be able to see what I would I did and not using that to compare, but maybe using it as a starting weight or or and because your own feeling of fatigue that day is going to come into to uh, part, which is why rate of perceived exertion is such an important skill to kind of regulate and auto regulation is really key for training. Um, but yeah, it's it's always focusing on your own race because as I said, everybody's come here with such a different level of experience and, and genetic and sporting background that to compare your even comparing your rate of progress to somebody else that joined the gym at the same time as you is just it's not serving you because it's just getting you focused on everybody else rather than your own achievements yeah wicked right guys so if you want to be a nice person join a crossfit gym or shy of it take it we uh well, we back. Joke. come join shy fit it's a great gym oh, i've been yeah. in many crossfit gyms and uh this is one of my favorites thank you johnny i'll pay you after the show <laughs> <laughs> right guys catch you next week hope you enjoyed that one found it useful uh we'll be in touch for another listener's question some point this week too see ya bye thank you for listening to the shy fit podcast with max and johnny don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next week for another episode